Back here at Tuvel Stadium, Chris Mahoski of the Bulldogs is set to tee it up at the 40-yard line on the far hash. He will be kicking to Justin Thompson of the Spartans. He kicks high, deep, and about five yards into the end zone. Referee will blow it dead once the ball hits the end line. And uh, play is dead, and uh, the Spartans will start their first drive from their own 20-yard line. And Pete, if Chris Mahoski continues to kick the ball off that deep in the entire season, Bentendorf won't, will not have to spend a lot of time on their kick coverage. So the Bulldog or the uh, Spartans, led by uh, looks like is that Austin Ziegler at quarterback. Pro set two re two receivers split out. First back up the middle. Nice game of a. About uh, three or four yards, that's number 45, the fullback, Kevin Lynn. Yeah, Pleasant Valley's running their tra uh, traditional wing tee attack again, Pete, and that was just a straight dive play, and they found a crease in there for five or six yards, and the Pleasant Valley offensive line really came off the ball the first play. And I talked to Mo uh, before the game, and he said he always reminds me the most important play in football is the center quarterback exchange, and on play number one, they got it right. Austin Ziegler, the quarterback, breaks him out of the huddle. They'll go uh, spread formation, double wing set for the Spartans. Guy in motion on the option. Actually, uh, let's see, where was the ball? Option. Quarterback keeper into the line. Short gain. It's going to be third down and about four for the Spartans. Awful hard to tell where that ball is going. That's why tonight I brought my trusty. Well, that was a real nice play by Max Kilber of the Bendorf defensive line. He had a real nice slant technique, kind of went right by his uh, offensive lineman, had a nice hit on the Pleasant Valley ball carry and stacked Pleasant up. We got a Pleasant Valley up and we got our first possession down in the evening. Split backs in the backfield, twin receivers to the short side of the field. Ziegler hands it off to the fullback up the middle and I think he's going to be held shy of the first down marker, Kevin Lynn. He needed to get to the 30-yard line and the ball is shy of the 30-yard line by about two feet. So it's going to be fourth down and short. What will Ed Morrissey do? As I don't see any mass substitutions coming in for the Spartans. I think they might go for it. They are going to go for it. Number 86 bringing the play in for the Spartans as Ryan Wendt. Brent give, Wendt gives the play to Ziegler. Spartans at the line. Two tight ends, tight formation, double wing set. Lynn the fullback as referees blow the play dead. Could we have a delay of game? I believe that was the call. The layup game called against the Spartans on fourth and inches. And now we'll see about six guys coming to the lineup for the Spartans as they will get set to punt the ball off back deep for the Bulldogs. Number 41, Sean Rizzo, and number 22, Justin Welsh. They will stand in between the 35 and 40 yard line. Actually, that's Tim Jackson back deep along with Rizzo and another flag looks like somebody might have lined up in the neutral zone and they're going to call this one against Bettendorf so it's going to go back up I believe they call it against Yusef Messiah their talented wide receiver or they called it against number 70 who's uh, Max Kabler who is uh, getting an earful from one of his coaches and Pleasant Valley's going to go for it again. <laughs> well, that's a great start. Yeah, the, the Pleasant Valley team get the delay a game play, and so they had to go back to punt formation, and then Bettendorf lines up off sides, and so it puts them right back to that fourth and one, and Coach Morris, he's going to go for it again. All right, John, yes or no, do you, do you go with the same play you had called the first time you were here? Uh, yeah, I think they will, and it looks like they're going to probably try. Right now, they've got a lot of success over the right side line. We'll see if they run that way, Pete. Double wing set. Quarterback keeps it himself, fumbles the snap a little bit. Not sure if he got to it on the quarterback sneak. The Bettendorf faithful don't think so. We'll see where the referees spot the ball. Bettendorf is celebrating like they've done the job, and they have. They won't even measure it. So the quarterback sneak by Ziegler does not quite work as Bettendorf gets the ball in excellent field position. And a final coach right now, Coach Schrader. I'm, uh, I'm putting it up in the air into the end zone. That's Coach Scott, Pete, from, Coach Scott. from Bettendorf. I know Coach Schrader's a great great friend of mine, too. <laughs> but a lot of times when you get a possession like that, a lot of time they go for the big play. Nick Brant, the starting quarterback for the Bulldogs, will have Rizzo in the backfield. And he is going to be hit as he throws the ball. Ball is loose on the ground. And who recovers it? It looks like the Bulldogs get it back. Big hit applied on the play by number 40. It looked like Jeremy Pringer 
from his defensive end position. Yeah, Pete, Jeremy really came hard off the edge that time, and nobody really picked him up, and then the quarterback, uh, Fick, was trying to throw the ball to the right, and he got blindsided, and QBs don't like that, and that ball was loose, and it looked like uh, one of the Bent North offensive linemen was fortunate to fall on it. Three receivers set for the Bulldogs, Rizzo the fullback, along with Jackson, who will line up in a slot position. Brand under center, he'll drop back, three-step drop to Jackson in the flat, Jackson to the 25, to the 20-yard line, close to the first down. And looks like he'll have enough for a Bulldog first down. That looks it should be right about at the stick, Pete, and yes, it is. And all they did was their outside receiver, they got in a twin formation. The outside receiver ran a takeoff, and the inside receiver went right to the flat, and they came right up and uh, uh, threw the ball in there. And it's, it's really Nick Brand, I guess, starting that quarterback instead of Fick. Randy thought he was going to go with Fick, and he must have uh, decided to go with Nick Brand. Same three receiver, one slot, one fullback set for the Bulldogs. Brain under center, Jackson in motion, dots the eye. He'll get the handoff over right tackle, spins his way out to the sideline to the short side of the field. He'll have a nice gain of about seven or eight yards on first down. It'll be second down and short for the Bulldogs. Yeah, we really had some nice blocking there. It was just kind of an ISO play that bounced outside. Jackson has very fast feet, Pete. He looks really well. And the Bendorf offensive linemen do an extremely good job of staying with their blocks. And that's where Randy Scott's strength is. He's been an offensive line coach, Pete, for 28 years. He's second down and four. I believe we'll be uh, checking in at uh, Brady Street Stadium here in a couple of minutes to find out what's going on with the Lancers and the Blue Devils. Second down and three, the call. Jackson in motion from the slot. He'll take the handoff, same play, going the other way. This one to the wide side. He tries to bounce it outside. He's going to be met right at the 10-yard line by number 84 for the, the Spartans on the tackle, Tony Ferris. You know, Tony uh, Ferris did a good job for PVP because that, uh, you know, they did a good job of bouncing it, and the corner got outran, and the free end uh, looked like the free safety came over the top and was able to push him out of bounds, but it comes down about third and about six inches for the dogs. I thought Jackson picked up enough for the first down. Ref say he must have uh, stepped out of bounds. Again, a spread formation is Brant under center for the Bulldogs, working with no tight end. They'll give it to Rizzo up the middle. Rizzo to the five yard line. Not a fast runner, but uh, he'll put his head down and just keep going, and it's tough, for, uh, tough to bring that kid down. Well, Rizzo has a lot of experience. He started every game last year for the Bulldogs at fullback, and they just ran like a zero give, an inside give to the fullback. And the Bentonorf offensive line are doing a nice job. They're getting off the ball. They look crisp as they come off the ball, and they're executing their offense very well right now. First and goal from the six-yard line. 7.48 to play in the first quarter. No score. Brand under center, he'll hand the ball off to Jackson. Jackson over right guard. Jackson stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Well, the Pleasant Valley defensive line had a nice surge. They tried to mix it up with a different formation, just brought their tail back in motion and ran the same ISO play. But the Pleasant Valley left side of their defensive line is getting a little bit more aggressive. They're starting to see, and also they're getting underneath some of the pads now and getting a little bit better surge. Messiah to one side of the field. Thomas Davis to the other side. They'll go with the tight end set. Jackson the tailback with Rizzo in motion across the line of scrimmage. Brant on the quick pitch to Jackson. Trying to go outside, got nothing. Loses five yards on the play. It's going to be third down and goal from the 10 or 11 for the Bulldogs. That's Tony Ferris again. He's playing a strong safety position, Pete, and uh, he made a big play earlier, and he came up on that sweep, and he was unblocked. So Bent North must have had some type of blocking assignment miss and a, just a great one-on-one -on -one tackle by Ferris. Chris Ivory, the talented junior, brings the ball in, or brings the play in for the Bulldogs. Probably a passing set, third and goal from the 11 as Ivory and Messiah split out to the wide side of the field as the Bulldogs calling for a timeout. They'll take a timeout. Let's check in with Bill Harrell over at Brady Street Stadium. Bill will be with us for uh, this season. We're going to send him to another game in the area, and he'll be doing reports all night long. And we invite you, the, the fan, if you're out at another game that uh, we're not at, go ahead and give Jeremy Link a call in the WOC studios with your score, 344 Seven zero four zero. That's three four four seven zero four zero. After the Bettendorf timeout, it'll be third down and eleven. Six twenty-seven to play in the first quarter. No score. Third and eleven. Third and goal from the eleven as a spread formation. Messiah 
and Ivory spread out to the wide side of the field. Brandt under center, looking that way, looking that way to the corner of the end zone, up high, no good. Ivory just off his fingertips in double coverage, batted down by Tony Ferris. Guys everywhere. Yeah, he is, and uh, Pleasant Valley was running a, a two deep zone that time, Pete, and they rolled up their corners and Ferris stepped back as a two deep safety, but when you get a shortened field like that, the safeties don't have to cover as much ground, and Tony did a real good job of just keeping his feet and, and timing it perfectly and knocking the ball down. Great play by him in the end zone. All right, big moment for me, one of my kids, Chris Mahoski, out on the field to try his uh, first field goal attempt of the season. This from 28 yards, bad snap. Kick is up, it looks good from here. It is good. All right. I worked with Chris all summer. He's got a terrific leg. Three to nothing to score. Bettendorf on top. We'll take a one minute timeout. 6.17 to play in the first quarter. It's back to football here on WOC. Talk Radio 1420. Back at Two Bell Stadium, Chris Mahoski gets on the uh, gets the bend door for the on his with a 28 yard field goal. His kickoff squibber on the ground. I think he slipped on the play and uh, was taken at the 21 yard line, but the Pleasant Valley uh, returner was on his knee when he fielded the ball. So Pleasant Valley will start on their own 21 yard line. They'll come out in another tight formation, just like that fourth down play that could not convert. Quarterback under center. He's going to do a quick pitch. Ball carrier with the ball's got a lot of running room across the 30 to the 35 yard line is number 22 for the Spartans, Justin Thompson. Awful nice looking play. Yeah, it really was. Pleasant Valley lined up in their double tight, double wing set, brought Thompson in motion, gave him the short toss, and what Justin did a great job of, Pete, he, he found the crease and he exploded right through it. A lot of backs, you know, do a little shaking, and he didn't do it that time. That was a great run by Justin Thompson. Austin Ziegler, the quarterback for the Spartans, at the line, two tight ends, two wing backs, and a fullback under center. Marks out the call, so they're going to go quick pitch the other way. And some running room, looks like number 45, Kevin Lynn. A nine yard gain across the 40 yard line to the 45 yard line. As two plays, the same play going the other direction. A lot of success. We got some. Uh, well, Pete, we got a lot of nice sponsors this year. We want to thank Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center, the lifeblood of our community, and 11th Street Bar and Grill, home of the famous Tenderloin. You betcha. Another double tight, double wing formation. This time the pitch will go to the wide side of the field, trying to string it out across to the 45 to the 50 yard line. We'll see where they mark. Justin Thompson out of bounds. Be right at the 50 yard line for the Spartans. So uh, three plays, same play, and Thompson will pick up a first down. Actually, they're going to mark it at the 48-yard line of the Spartans, but it still was enough for the first down. Yeah, Justin kind of made nothing out of, you know, something there where he uh, uh, really looked like Rasher was going to come up and tackle him for the Bulldogs, and then all of a sudden Justin did a little inside shoulder dip and out ran him to the boundary. First and ten for the Spartans. Five minutes to play in the first quarter. They trail Bettendorf three to nothing. Same formation, this time they'll run the option. Actually, they'll give it the ball up the middle to the fullback. And he'll cross the 50 yard line into Bettendorf territory. Ball carrier on the play, number 45, Kevin Lynn. So Lynn has split the time at both halfback and fullback tonight for the Spartans. Well, the Spartans try to run a little inside trap, give it to the fullback and mix it up. But Jake Carter from Bettendorf sat right in there and read it very well and made a nice play. Bettendorf's trying to mix up their 4-3 defense and their 6-1 now, Pete, to try and give Pleasant Valley some different looks up front. Lynn and Thompson, the wingman. Lynn will get the pitch right up the middle. They'll have a game of about two or three yards stacked up nicely by a host of Bulldog tacklers. So it's going to be third down and we'll call it seven for the Spartans. Well, the Bulldog defense there really rallied to the ball, Pete, and that was good hustle, and they're getting the first hits. But what they're doing now, they're getting more guys to the ball, and they're, you know, they've limited PV just to a couple yards in the first two carries. Interesting. Uh, Bettendorf checks in with U7 Messiah and Tim Jackson for this third and long play. And they're a little mixed up on the defensive side of the ball. 
as Pleasant Valley split, spreads one guy out. And, uh-oh, he's going to be hit in the backfield. Breaks away from it as uh, Ziegler will pick up a yard or two on the game. But Bendorf uh, was mixed up all over the place in the defensive back. It's going to be fourth down and long. And we'll see if uh, yep, they're going to bring on the running unit. Parker Doyle. Well, on your third and long calls, P, where well, you're going to have a lot of time if you are a good option team, the option is, is definitely a viable call there, and, and I think Coach Morrissey thought he'd show it. It didn't work. We had a great play there by uh, Parker Quell from Bentendorf, stayed at home, made a nice and tackle on the PB quarterback. And the punts, Mark Klein, another young man got the opportunity to work with this summer. Back deep, Jackson and Rizzo, they'll stand at their own 15-yard line. Klein gets it into it. It's an end-over kick. It'll... Bounce at the 16-yard line. Jackson will pick it up. Look one way, go the other. Got some running room along the sideline. Breaks the tackle out across the 20, oh, almost the 25-yard line. Let's see where the referees mark the ball. Bettendorf leading. And the 32, Tim Jackson on the return. 28-yard field goal at the 6-17 mark of the first quarter. We got 2.53 to play in the first quarter. The ball will be spotted right at the 24-yard line on the far hash. As the quarterback still Nick Grant for the Bulldogs. We do expect to see young Mr. Fick into the ballgame sometime tonight for Bettendorf. Jackson in motion from the slot position right up the middle, middle on the carry across the 25-yard line, brought down about the 23-yard line. Number 32, Tim, uh, Tim Jackson's a hard running back, and it looks like Pete, just by watching the first couple series, he's going to get the ball a lot tonight. And and Bettendorf uh, does have a nice multiple offense, so they got a very good running game, and you know they have the ability to throw the ball. That's something they didn't have last year. One of the things that caught them in the title game was not really having a, a great offensive threat like they've had in the past. But uh, Jackson and Messiah teaming up this year should uh, do the trick. Second down and six. Three-step drop in the flat to Jackson. Jackson running room. If he could break the outside, he does. Tackle at about the 37, 38-yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down. A nice 10-yard gain on the second down and seven. Just a simple pass into the flat. Yeah, it really was. Uh, they're playing a cover two, Pleasant Valley is. And Cade Mailer, who's the outside corner, chased a slant route too far inside. And, uh, and the Ben North QB had a great read on that. And he just tossed the ball outside. Pleasant Valley's just got to make the adjustment and have the corner set outside. And and just switch routes. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Ball at their own 38-yard line. Grant looks around, possibly audibles. Jackson down the line will take that uh, quick handoff. And he's going to be tackled for a loss by number one, Matt Mulvena. Mulvena will drop him for about a three or four-yard loss. As that quick jet handoff did not quite work that time. Man, no, I didn't, Pete. I had a chance to watch Matt Mulvaney play a lot of baseball this summer for Pleasant Valley, and he has excellent speed out in the outfield and had a very good year hitting. And you can see he's a very good athlete. He has good speed, and he just used his speed to run down the Benton North ball carrier. Second down and 14, ball back at the Benton North 35-yard line. Spread formation. Receivers on both sides of the formation. Down the middle of the field, tipped, and... Intercepted on the play, intercepted by Pleasant Valley. That looks like number eight, Brent Greenwood. The ball was tipped by Messiah. Messiah was trying to tip it to himself. And Greenwood, in on the coverage, comes up with a big pick for Pleasant Valley, stopping the Bettendorf drive. He will get the ball their own 46-yard line. Great effort. Yeah, it really was, Pete, and Pleasant Valley still sitting in their cover, too, and that time their corner stayed at home. They switched the routes, forced the Bettendorf uh, quarterback to throw in double coverage, and you saw what happens when you throw in, in, in the two defenders. Austin Ziegler at the line, split back in the backfield with a wing and wide receiver. They'll do that double crisscross handoff. As Thompson has it, he'll pick up a gain of about two yards. It'll be second down and eight for the Spartans. You know, that counter crisscross play has always been a, a very good play for Pleasant Valley. When, it, when Kaz Merrick was at Assumption, he ran it a ton of times, and it's a great misdirection for the high school, but that time Bettendorf was well prepared for it, sat on it, and, only, and gave up only a short gain there. Next week, September 12th, we'll be at Brady Street Stadium. Central and West kick off right around 7.30. That's next Friday, Central at West. Second down and eight for the Spartans. Ziegler will hand it off to the second back through. Got a lot of running room. Bubble on the play. Who's got it? It looks like the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs recover. I think Thompson had it. 
Thompson had a nice gain of about 15 yards, coughed up the ball, and the ball rolled another 10 yards. I think that was Kevin Lynn maybe in, in motion there coming across Pete, and he had a nice gain. He really uh, spurted right up the middle there, and all of a sudden, not, it didn't look like the ball even got knocked out. It just no, looked like he uh, mishandled it, and the Bulldogs secondary was there to flop on it. First and 10 for uh, Bettendorf, so the team's trade turnovers. Messiah in motion. They'll go with uh, Jackson up the middle, straight ahead power football, Bettendorf Bulldog style. Picks up a gain of about six yards. It'll be second down for the Bulldogs. You know, Sean Rizzo is going to be a quality fullback in this league. He has a lot of experience. That's a nice series that Bettendorf had. A lot of fake, and they, they run the jet sweep and, and then hand off to the fullback. And Rizzo is going to be a guy that's going to get tough yardage all year for the Bettendorf Bulldogs. Should be the last play of the quarter, unless it's a pass. 15 seconds to go. Second down and four. Brand under center. Jet sweep coming for Messiah. He'll arc it out, but he's going to be tackled for a loss. So they've run two of those, and nothing has transpired on either of the jet sweeps. They'll lose yardage, and that'll be the end of the first quarter. At the end of one, Bettendorf three, Pleasant Valley zero. We'll be back with the second quarter in a minute here on WOC Talk Radio 1420. Here at Tuval Stadium, we're going to have a third down and seven for the Bulldogs. They lead Pleasant Valley three to nothing. Pete Ivanic, John Furlong. Our back game of the week, first of the season. Brand rolls out to the wide side of the field, looking around, looking around, has Messiah open at the 45-yard line. And Messiah picks up the first down for the Bulldogs. And penalty flag on the play, our first flag of the year. Well, actually not, but. Right, <laughs> we had second flag or something like that. Look like maybe a uh, delay a game or I think he motioned an eligible guy down eligible field. downfield. So they ran a sprint out pass that time, Pete, and they got the edge. Uh, the Pleasant Valley linebacker kind of hesitated, should have probably came up and fast forced on it. Uh, then Brant was able to find uh, a receiver in the flat, but it's all going to be looks like coming back penalty against Bendor. And I believe that is uh, an eligible man downfield. Just a five yard penalty. I don't know. I don't know, Pete. After all those <laughs> arena games, I've kind of lost track all of all different. these different rules. So uh, you're going to have to fill me in on a few of them. Third down and 12 for the Bulldogs. Twin receiver split to the near side, the wide side. Jackson the slot. Rizzo the fullback with the receiver to the short side. Brant will roll out. And they're going to throw a screen to Jackson. Jackson catches it at the 23, gets a block. And he's going to have enough for the first down as he crosses midfield. And that's some open territory. Gets to the 45, to the 50 before he's brought down. And he ran from one sideline to the other. The play took forever. But he'll uh, have a nice 20-yard gain on the play. Well, that was a great call there by, uh, you know, the Ben North offense. Uh, they did a super job. They got him in a two-man uh, situation, so all the corners got ran off, Pete. The safeties were playing, a, a, you know, kind of a help look, and so it was a matchup, one-on-one -on -one linebacker, and he got two or three linemen in front of him. So Randy Scott's offense came up with a big first down. Three-receiver look. Rizzo, the fullback. Jackson will start in motion from the slot. He'll dot the eye. He'll get the ball on the handoff. A plunge into the line, and right at the 50-yard line, he'll uh, be held for a gain of about a yard and a half, two yards. Three to nothing to score, 11-15 to play in the first half. Bettendorf leading on a Chris Mahoski 28-yard field goal. Well, on the Pleasant Valley side, Pete, we would probably say a few more names out of their defensive line, but in the program we have, some of their numbers are a little off here, so we, we'd be guessing. But so far, you know, Justin Thompson has played a really good uh, defensive back for uh, Pleasant Valley, and their defensive line linebackers have been really active. Brant, three-step drop to Jackson in the flat. Jackson has done everything tonight, but not on that play. Only gain of about one yard. He's going to be dropped by by number 84, and Tony Ferris. From, well, Rusty Van Rutz, uh, Van Wetzinger, the old uh, All-American linebacker from uh, you know uh, Augustana in Pleasant Valley. He's just, he's a defensive coordinator. And he's doing a good job of mixing up his coverages. He's moving his fronts a little bit. And he's starting to cause a little havoc for the Bulldogs. Third down and seven. Ball at the 49-yard line of Pleasant Valley. Twin receiver split to the near side. A single receiver. To the opposite side, looks like uh, Rizzo, the fullback, Jackson in slot. Brant will roll out to the wide side. Down the field, chucks it up. Great defensive play. Knocking the ball from Yusef Masaya's hands is 
Who, who else? Tony Ferris. Yeah, that was really nice. A, uh, it looked like a Pleasant Valley ran in a man-to-man -man defense with their free safety free. Uh, once again, mixing up their coverages, and that caused confusion to the high school kids. And, and give credit to uh, you know Rusty Van Wetzinger with the defensive calls, but once again, his defensive backs are doing a super job. Tony Ferris has had two or three really nice plays so far for Pleasant Valley. Back deep is Thompson and Brent Greenwood for the Spartans into punt. Another one of the uh, kids I spent time with this summer. Donnie Connor. Connor will put his foot into the ball. It's a nice spiral right at the uh, taken by Greenwood at the 10. Greenwood breaks two tackles, takes it across the 20 to the 25 yard line. So a decent punt, decent return as the Spartans will take over from their own 22 yard line. Speaking of Augustana, they're at home tomorrow against the University of Wisconsin at Stevens Point. You can uh, attend. John will be there watching his son kick off his senior year. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see Matt and a lot of other seniors. They have quite a few senior starters on both sides of the ball and they hope to have a big year. Uh, both teams are nationally ranked tomorrow, so that should be a great game. Two tight ends, two wing set for the uh, Spartans. Handoff goes up the middle to the fullback. Or does it? They ended up running that toss Thompson. sweep there to, uh, you know, uh, Justin Thompson again. And I'm starting to like Thompson here a little bit. He has a little shake to him, and has a little bit of speed. And, and even though he got only about three or four yards on that, there wasn't a lot there for him again. He's doing the best he can to, tr to create some own yardage with his own, uh, his own moves, Pete. So second down and seven, nine and a half to play in the first half. Three to nothing the score. Bettendorf leading Pleasant Valley. Two tight ends, two wing set, a fullback in the backfield. Thompson goes in motion. They'll give the ball to the fullback. A lot of running room as he is going to be met by a defensive back right near the 40-yard line. And can't quite see the number just yet. Mike Martinez. Mike Martinez, ball carrier. Number 43 for the Spartans. A big gainer on the play. A little mix up there. They, you know, they ran a little counter option there. Handed the ball off inside of the fullback, and he just exploded through there, and he kind of fooled the Bulldogs on that play. Wing set, one receiver split out for the Spartans. Second back through is Lynn. Lynn will have it to the, about the 45-yard line off of left tackle. Going to be brought down on the play by number 43, Pat Anger. Boy, there's a good name to have for a defensive player. Yeah, there you go. You got to get Anger. Uh, Pleasant Valley's offensive line is doing a pretty good job. This is a very evenly matched game so far, Pete. We've had a few mistakes, a couple penalties that hurt both teams. Two and turnovers. A couple turnovers. But uh, for the main part, uh, the Pleasant Valley's offensive line is starting to gel a little bit here. A broken wishbone formation in the backfield. Looks like Lynn, Lynn gets the ball. He's going to have another... Nice five-yard gain, very close to the first down. I bet you they give it to him as the, the ball is going to be spotted right near the 50-yard line. You know, with that combination of Lynn and Thompson, they've got uh, a little bit. Lynn has more size to him, 6'1", 183, and, and Thompson looks like he has a little more shake to him. So this could be a nice backfield for uh, Coach Morrissey this year. First down for the Spartans. Eight minutes to play in the first half, three to nothing to score. Bulldogs on top of the Spartans. It's our first MAC game of the week here for 2003 on WOC. Two tight ends, two wing back. Thompson gets the pitch, hitting the right side. He's gonna be brought down right near the line of scrimmage. Matt Anger in on the stop. Well, the big play right there was Chuck Mayberry, 5'11", 200 pound junior. He really read that play and he caught it from the backside. Anytime you can run down a sweet play from the backside, that's a pretty good read by the defense. Ted Eby bringing the play in for the Spartans. They got second down in nine. Ball right at the 50 yard line. Double wing set formation, one tight end to the strong side. Thompson on the pitch, and he's going to have a gain of about two yards. Brought down on the play by number 65 for the Bulldogs. That is Mike Wolf. Yeah, Mike's a six-foot, 200-pound senior. Once again, Bentendorf starting to get some reads now. 
you know, Pleasant Valley has basically ran only three running plays here. Pete, the fullback trap, a little bit of the, uh, now it's really been the sweep play and they tried an option play, but uh, this is Pleasant Valley type football. They're going to go pound it at you. They're going to shorten the game and try and get it down to one possession at the end of the game and, and beat you that way. Big third down play coming for the Spartans. If they want to keep this drive alive, they've got to do it here. On the quarterback keeper, got plenty of running room, crosses the 40-yard line to the Bulldogs for a first down. Great play by the quarterback for the Spartans, Austin Ziegler. Well, that was another mix up there. They've been uh, giving the ball to the fullback and the tailback QB hasn't really carried that much, but that was just a fake to the second man through and the quarterback ended up falling right up the hole. And some of these plays look a lot like the Augustana offense, Pete, so I can uh, you know, understand this pretty well. Two tight ends, two wing set, two wingmen for the uh, Spartans. Looks like Martinez, the fullback as he'll get the ball on the trap play. Got a lot of running room. If he get a block, he may go to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5 before he is taken down at the 5 yard line of Bettendorf. Pleasant Valley in great field position here with 5.49 to play in the first half, trailing by three to Bettendorf. Pleasant Valley will have it first and goal from the five. Boy, what a great call by Ed Morris. He got him going outside, outside, outside. Came right back with an inside trap and give Martinez a lot of credit. He actually got, looked like he was going down two or three times and he must have excellent feet and very good balance too, Pete. Inverted wishbone, it looks like in the backfield for the Spartans. Martinez, the ball carrier. And he's going to take it down to the one or two yard line. Nice big hole. No black shirts around. You know, they only list uh, Martinez as 5'8", 176, but he looks a lot bigger than that. And they just lined up in the straight T, uh, real power looking offense, and had a good surge by the offensive line. And it's uh, second in about two inches, Pete. As Pleasant Valley tight formation, this time they'll spread the wings out. As. Handoff goes up the middle, and I don't think he got it. Nope, he didn't get it. He got stuffed at the line. That's the fullback, which would have been Martinez again. Well, Bettendorf's sitting in their goal line defense, and on goal line defense, you teach those defensive linemen to, you know, to, to get low surges. Well, we kind of got there knocked go. out there for a little bit, but get little surges there, and they did a super job, and now it's third and in, in short. One. As quarterback sneak, and he fumbles the football! And I think Pleasant Valley, because no, nobody from Bedendorf is celebrating, so I think Pleasant Valley is going to get this one back. But wow, what do you do now? You lost a yard on the play. Looks like you were going to run a sneak on that play as uh, quarterback Austin Ziegler just kind of lost it for a second. And wow, well, that could have been disaster. And I think it's on the three yard line, fourth down and three. They're gonna take a timeout. Let's take a 30 second break here. Uh, we'll come back with the fourth down play. It's our Mac game of the week here on WOC Talk Radio 1420. They'll line up on the ball. Fourth down and three, the Spartans will go for it. The formation is a double wing set. Martinez is the fullback. Thompson and Lynn, the halfbacks. Ziegler under center. He's going to be wrapped up with the ball. The play went nowhere. Dropped for a two-yard loss. I'm not sure what they were trying to do. Any run the option? Yeah, Pete, you know, one thing that uh, was a little bit questionable down here, when you get down by your goal line, I guess I've always been a big believer that you try and get the ball to your best backs, guys that, you know, used to run in the ball. And if your quarterback's a great runner, and I could see going with it, but he ends up touching the ball three out of the last four times, and yeah. Pleasant Valley ends up with nothing. And uh, I'm sure Coach Morrissey maybe would like to have that series back. First and ten, Bulldogs will start, though, from their own five-yard line. As they'll go with Rizzo right up the middle. He'll break away, and he gets to the 15-yard line. Somehow he got through that uh, big pile of linemen, and, man, he got a first down. Yeah, he really did, but what I liked about that, Pete, there were some defensive backs smacking guys that time. You know, Rizzo had a nice spill, but old Brett Greenwood came up and gave him a good pop. And one of the things you don't see in high school all the time is good secondary uh, tackling, Pete. And if you really coach that up, uh, it makes you an excellent defensive football team. First and ten for the Bulldogs as they approach the line. Jackson in the slot. 
two receivers with the tight end, Rizzo the fullback. Grant under center, Jackson dots the eye in motion. He'll take the handoff up the middle and he gets nothing to play. It's gonna be second down and long. We'll remind our listeners tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. We'll start the pregame show. The Iowa Hawkeyes, they take on the University of Buffalo tomorrow. Kickoff around 11, but if you tune in about 9 o'clock, we'll hear one of our friends, Jim Albert. Yeah, Jim does a great job. Had a great time with them all the time doing the arena games. And uh, I know he does an outstanding job. I listened to him last week on the pregame show, and he's always having fun. Second down and nine. Under three minutes to play in the first half. Bettendorf three, Pleasant Valley zero. Grant under center, three receiver set. He's going to throw the fade if he can get it off, and he's not going to be able to get it off. He was looking for Messiah on the fade down the sideline. Sacked on the play. Looks like uh, 61 in on the play for Pleasant Valley. We don't have a 61 in the program. No, we don't. We know number 60 is Rob Wakeland, and he made the real nice play on, on the counter tray before. And it might be Brandon Eiley, who's 62, but we don't know. We don't have a 61 up here in the program. We'll try and find that out at halftime. But an excellent play, back-to-back -back plays by defensive linemen from Pleasant Valley. Third down and a long 16 for Bettendorf, but they converted one of these earlier on a screen pass to Jackson. We'll see what the call is here. Third and 16, Messiah in motion down the line of scrimmage. They fake the jet sweep. Looks like they were going to run an option to Jackson, but... Uh, Grant tackled in the backfield, the five-yard loss. Pleasant Valley comes up with two great defensive stops, and they call timeout. Let's take a one-minute break here as we near the end of the first half. It's 3 to nothing. Ben North on top of Pleasant Valley. It's our Mac Game of the Week here on WOC Talk Radio 1420. Donnie Connor putting from his... Oh, Connor putting from his end zone is going to be taken down. And uh, the ball was not deflected on the play. Rizzo falls on it at the 27-yard line, but uh, Connor definitely was hit on the play. As Donnie did a great job on it, it was a high snap. Did a great job to bring the ball down and get the punt off. Yeah, it was about six yards deep into the end zone, and uh, this would be an automatic first down, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think it is, Pete. We had uh, that's that's a bad break for Pleasant Valley. They had uh, a very nice defensive stand there. Great uh, play by their defensive line. And then that was a bad snap, and they had excellent pressure. And what happens, uh, you know, the, the Ben oh, North punter, Connor, Valley. stepped away, Welcome and it looked like, uh, you know, a Pleasant Valley player just got a little bit too aggressive. And, uh, you know, a bad break for PV, but a good break for Pleasant First Valley. And, and you're going to have some mistakes early in the season, and that's one I'm sure Pleasant Valley wish they had back. Uh, we're going to check in with Bill Horrell here in a second, maybe even after this play. Bill, stand by with an update from Brady Street Stadium on Central and North Scott. Last we heard, I believe North Scott was seven and Central was six. Spread formation for the Bulldogs, three receivers, and I believe that's Fick in at quarterback for the Bulldogs. He'll roll out, running with it, take it to the 20 yard, the 30 yard line, close to the first down as the clock will keep running with one minute and 30 seconds. So we'll keep it right here for the time being. Well, Pete, Pleasant Valley's defenders did a great job that team. They covered up the pass very well. Fick had to uh, sprint out, but they kept him in bounds. They didn't let him run out of bounds and stop the clock. Excellent tackling by the Pleasant Valley Spartans. Fick with three receivers will hand it off to Rizzo. Rizzo up the middle to the 35-yard line. That's where Ben North will... Get a first down, so the clock will stop for a second, and they call timeout. Let's check in with Bill Harrell over at Brady Street Stadium. Bill, enough of the score. Bulldogs on top. Uh, ben North has uh, avoided a couple of different situations where they could have given up points, but they lead it as we near the end of the first half. First and ten. Ryan Fick under center will drop back, five-step drop down the sideline, airs it out. It's going to be picked off on the play by number 24. That is Wade Muller. Muller down the sideline across the 40 to the 35-yard line before he is knocked out of bounds into the PV sideline. Well, that was, you know, a young quarterback throwing in the coverage, trying to make a play happen. And uh, the bet, and I'll tell you what, the Pleasant Valley secondary is very well coached. They know where to line up. They're playing the balls well. And Tim Jackson actually made a big tackle because otherwise uh, PV would have had a little bit bigger return. First and 10 for Pleasant Valley. We'll see if they can do something here in the last 104 of the half. Two receivers to the wide side. As Zeke will roll out that way, looking down the field, heaves it long, 
caught on the play by Thompson, but he loses his footing at the three yard line. He could have walked into the end zone. But they're going to have it first and goal as an excited Pleasant Valley. Sideline erupts with 57 seconds to play in the half. Three to nothing to score. First and goal for the Spartans at the Bulldog at two and a half, three yard line. Just a trip formation with the inside guy going to the boundary and up. The Bent North defensive back stops his feet. The ball gets thrown over top of him. Thompson and Lynn, your halfbacks. Thompson will get the ball, looking up the middle. He's going to be into the end zone. Touchdown, Pleasant Valley. A three-yard run by Justin Thompson. Yeah, Justin really made a great run there, Pete. There was a, there was a huge hole on the right side of the offensive line. Justin just kept his feet going. And I, I think after Justin fell down uh, after that catch, where he probably should have got in, right. he, you know, he was all fired up, and he knew that time it wasn't going to be denying. There was a flag after the play, and it might either be celebration or maybe a, a roughness of, of some sort against Bentendorf. I believe the call is going against the Bulldogs. Personal foul called against Bettendorf. That will be tacked on, I believe, on the kickoff. As in to try the point after attempt is Ryan Morales. Ryan, a junior. The snap, the hold, the kick, it's up. Looks good from here. It is 7-3 Pleasant Valley. Takes the lead near the end of the first half. We'll keep it right here. We'll remind folks that uh, Thursday nights at 6 p.m. on Fox Sports Radio 1230 WFXN. We have a whole hour devoted to Quad Cities High School football. Myself and Mike Cook would get together for the point after presented by Hungry Hobo. Your source for high school action. We'll go over scores from last week, preview games from the following week. And we'll talk about stats and players. We'll have an interview with the coach or two. And we'll talk about playoff scenarios. It's the point after presented by Hungry Hobo Thursdays at 6 on our sister station, Fox Sports Radio 1230. We mentioned the Iowa game tomorrow morning. Pre-game at 9, kickoff at 11. Illinois will also be on the airwaves on AM 1270 WKBF. Kickoff around 11 o'clock, Illinois versus Illinois State. And again, next week, we'll be over at, uh, I consider that my home in the fall, Brady Street Stadium, Central at West, the battle of two-thirds of Davenport. Well, it definitely will be, but you know, this whole game has, has been, been different, Pete, because the mistakes have really uh, kind of set up scores, and that time, uh, Pleasant Valley got a couple big plays, a big pass play, and a nice run by Justin Thompson for the score to put PV ahead here. Morales on the kickoff. Ooh, it goes off the side of his foot. It's really short down to the 25-yard line, but the Bendorf defender falls on his uh, knee, and he's going to be down right at the 23-yard line. Well, it looked like it was number 45, uh, Brent Troy, is a junior, and and that was kicked to an up guy, and those guys probably aren't, you know, they usually are taught, you know, get to your knee right. or get in the middle and get as much as you can. So either way, it wasn't a bad play for Benton North. First and 10 for the Bulldogs, 44 seconds to work with in the half. They trail Pleasant Valley 7 to 3. As we open the max season here at Tuvel Stadium on a beautiful night for football. Two receiver set, one tight end. Jackson in the slot hill. Motion and dot the eye. Handoff will go up the middle to Rizzo. Rizzo across the 25 to the 27 yard line. As uh, Bettendorf may be content to just let this clock run out at halftime, we're going to be joined by Daryl Bates of the Quad City Times. Uh, Daryl's one of the top sport writers. He's always done a great job. He, you know, Daryl's strength is he's done a great job of covering new sports in the local colleges here, and I've always been a big fan of Daryl's. Ditto. Seven seconds to play. Trap play, Rizzo up the middle, breaks the tackle as he'll have enough for a first down, and the clock runs out. We got halftime. Pleasant Valley, the Spartans take a 7-3 lead into the halftime locker room behind Justin Thompson's three-yard run with 45 seconds to play. In the second quarter, Bettendorf was on the scoreboard in the first quarter with Chris Mahoski's 28-yard field goal. Uh, that's all the scoring we have. We'll take a two-minute timeout. We'll come back with the halftime show 
It's Mac Football here on Talk Radio 1420. Back at Tuval Stadium, our halftime score, Pleasant Valley 7, Bettendorf 3. It's been the, Benton, the uh, Pleasant Valley defense that has stolen the show tonight in the first half. I'm Pete Ivanic, uh, joined by Daryl Bates. Daryl Bates with the Quad City Times. Thanks for joining us, Daryl. Uh, just a perfect night for football, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, the newness of the of the season's kind of showing up. There's been quite a few mistakes or so by both teams. Let's, uh, maybe we'll turn the crowd mic down here <laughs> a little bit, so because the uh, Gold Dusters are out on the field doing a great job for Bettendorf, but uh, music is pretty loud. Daryl, uh, MAC Conference this year loaded with superstars. Uh, we kind of, uh, our uh, the point after last night with Mike Coco, we kind of went through it and we discovered that there are so many Division One uh, talented kids on the Iowa side, and you really don't have that on the Illinois side this year. And uh, things kind of start with Kevin Hart, and Ted Bentler, and the, the linebacker from uh, uh, Burlington uh, uh, that signed with Iowa, Bentler's Iowa, uh, Zach Ferrer's Iowa State from Muscatine. Uh, just a whole uh, big group of talented kids. Yeah, I think you're right, Pete. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. I I'm guessing that uh, several other kids are going to kind of emerge, uh, like you mentioned, uh, you know, with Ferrer and uh, Bentler and King. Uh, that's the, the three early signees. And it'll be interesting to see uh, some other ones kind of develop out of that. Uh, all the ones that you named, and there's uh, quite a few other ones that are possibilities by the season's end. League procrastinator or uh, uh, league predictions of, of uh, taking Muscatine maybe for the top team in the conference. I like Bettendorf. Assumptions going to be all big and strong. Maybe maybe not be as quick as they were last year on offense. Uh, a lot of people didn't know this. Assumption had 2,000 yards rushing, almost 1,000 yards more than anybody else had in the conference last year. They also had more than 1,000 yards passing, which is a pretty good feat for a school their size. Uh, how do you see the conference race going this year? Well, like you mentioned, uh, I think you certainly have to look to Muscatine has uh, quite a few skill kids plus linemen returning or so, and uh, with that passing attack uh, and all the receivers plus Zach Wells, the quarterback coming back, I think certainly you have to look at them as probably the favorite. Uh, I, I figured Bendorf would be pretty tough defensively. I, I knew it may take some time offensively for him, and, but here again, you know, Pleasant Valley surprised Bendorf last year, the first game of the season, beating him. And, here we go again. Yeah, it very well could happen again tonight. Or so. Ed Morris, who just does a great job uh, with his players or so. And, uh, you know, he's been around the league for so many years that uh, he's one guy that you really admire. As in every season, we always have coaching changes. This year we've got, I believe, three in the conference. And a couple of them were weird situations with uh, Mark Bloom leaving north I believe in June I think it was or in May or June uh, I think it was after the school year ended uh, to take an open job uh, in Clinton uh, and the other one uh, was Paul Flynn retiring from West High School after a, a successful run just the last couple of years uh, the, the talent wasn't quite there on the offensive side of the ball they were tough as nails Hold on, Mercy so, Band, the uh, field is yours. Randy Schrader takes over there leaves his, his administrative position just some weird happenings over the summer. Well, and then Skip Eckhart uh, stepped in out to north uh, to replace Mark. Uh, and, of course, Skip uh, was a head coach at Central for a couple, three years, I believe. And uh, then also one year interim head coach out to North Scott when Randy Schrader took the P.E. job uh, as in Davenport. So, I mean, it's it kind of ironic uh, how the three... I don't know if you want to call them uh, recycled, but right. uh, they are. But, <laughs> but uh, coaches, and it, and it's kind of strange too that uh, you know, like right off the bat, I believe uh, tonight West is up to Clinton, so you got two of the two of the new coaches meeting each other, and I believe next week uh, North and uh, Clinton play each other, and so you, it's kind of ironic how the schedule has worked out too uh, in that regards. So a lot of coaching changes. Uh, Randy Schrader taking over a West program that uh, uh, didn't win a game, I think, in any 
of the three levels last year. I think they were 0-9. I know they were 0-9 varsity and sophomores, and I think they were 0-9 uh, freshman-wise. Um, so he's got a tough job ahead of him. Uh, but I got to think, you know, he's been in this situation before, and things are going to look bright, and they may look brighter sooner than uh, most people think. Well, I think Randy will help turn the program around. I think all the Damport schools with the... Uh, the recent inclusion of uh, football at the seventh grade level uh, is certainly going to help their programs. Uh, it's something that's been lacking uh, over the number of years, and the programs certainly, I don't think anybody would deny, have, have really slipped in the last few years. Uh, it used to be you could count on Central or West, and maybe not North, since it's a relatively new school. And I know they've never been to the playoffs or anything, but uh, you could count at least on a couple of the schools being strong, and, and that certainly hasn't been the case in recent years. And, but I think they're going to rebound, and pretty soon you'll maybe see them up there holding their own. With one last question, Daryl, uh, for Daryl Bates of the Quad City Times. Uh, did anything happen uh, uh, with the playoffs, or does anything change this year? We see so many changes going on in Illinois. Uh, they put the teams in quadrants now this year for semifinals. They're going to regroup the teams and kind of seed them. Uh, is anything happening in Iowa that we should be aware of as far as rule changes or playoff qualification changes? Not to my knowledge. Uh, it seems to be, uh, I don't know if you noticed, the uh, eight-man football, which we don't have over on this side of the state. But they're uh, now, this will be the second year that, that they're going to have their state championship up the Uni Dome. And, the, the number of teams or schools uh, seems to be kind of a, at a standstill the last couple, three years. They really haven't grown what like they per, perhaps predicted. And, and it may even go the other way once uh, some of the schools start consolidating right. again. We'll go back to 11-man football from the teams that, that are having eight-man football. Do you have a Cubs score? They were ahead three to one. Uh, Sammy hit a two run homer in the first. <laughs> they had a little bean ball. Both teams got worn. Both. Is that each, right? Yeah. And so. Well, I'll forgive you for not listening to us here, John, but that's all right. So Cubs are ahead three to one. Correct. Yeah. All right, Daryl, thanks for joining us on our halftime show. Uh, we'll be sure to check out your article tomorrow in the Quad City Times, and tomorrow you'll be at Augustana. Correct. Augie yeah. and Stevens Point. Should be a great game or so. Uh, both those teams are nationally ranked in the preseason and, and I look for good things to happen uh, for Augie and Ambrose doesn't open up the season for another week but uh, I think uh, they may surprise some people too in this season. All right Daryl thanks a lot. We'll take a uh, two minute break come back we'll inch close to the third quarter our score at halftime Pleasant Valley 7, Ben North 3 it's an action call here on the WOC Talk Radio 14-12 first game and, and we knew coming into this that these uh, teams are very well coached and they have very good defenses and the defenses really did stand out. They had some excellent uh, tackling, some good interceptions, very good play. So I think Randy is just telling them, hey, we got to stay with our blocks a little longer. We got to execute and we got to eliminate the penalties because penalties did hurt them a few times. Morales, a uh, high kickoff, kind of short, taking up a 16 yard line and it go right up the middle and into a pile of blockers right at the 29-yard line. Number 11 looked like uh, the block here. Yeah, that's not a, if, if you have great kickoff guys and if you're not going to boot the ball. It's such a weapon to kick it in the Yeah, it is. And if you can't get in the end zone, that's not a bad way to kick it off. But if you kick it out of bounds, the other team gets at the 35. So they only, you know, balls at the 30. Hey, we did find out 61, who had a tremendous first half for Pleasant Valley. Jason Bowling, he's got, he's listed with two numbers okay. in the program. So we finally discovered him. Ryan Fick to start the second half quarterback to the fullback Rizzo. Rizzo plunges ahead, picks up a gain of about a one or two yards. As uh, I believe we mentioned it earlier, but Rusty then went to the defense this year for the Spartans. You know, Rusty really knows a lot about defense. He had a chance to, you know, had a very good college career, he had a chance to play arena football. And everything that Rusty has done, he's been very competitive in, and I'm sure he'll have this Spartan defense fired up in the second half. Jackson in motion, dots the eye on the counter tray, tries to slip a tackle but can't. Great penetration by Pleasant Valley. And, and Bettendorf has a bigger offensive line, but I think Pleasant Valley might be like wider. 
Well, they just can't block Jason Bowling. That's a young man that uh, wore number, the number 61 jersey in the first half, and he stopped their counter trays. He has had some sacks. And if you watch him line up, Pete, he's not a huge kid. He's 5'9", 184, but watch his quickness off the ball. And in high school, if you have guys that quick, you can get away a little bit by being undersized. Third down and nine. Three receiver set. Fick will roll out to the strong side of the field. And penalty flags fly. Fick will uh, tuck it under. He's going to be close to the first down. He's going to be shy of the first down. We'll see what the flag is. Could have been a holding on the offense is the call. Number 15, this one will come back. Flag on the play. Holding called against the Bulldogs. Well, one of the things that's happened right now, number 60, Rob Wakeland, every time they sprint out, he's getting blocked and he's losing contain. And that's something hard to do live and practice during two-a-days, Pete. And now you see in the game, that's one thing that the Spartan defense is going to have to polish up on because Fick uh, probably could have just tucked it down and ran immediately, and he finally saw it. And there is a holding call, and it had to come in the interior part of the line because they had the outside very well blocked. Holding is declined on the play, so it's going to be fourth down and three. So instead of taking their chances with a third down and long, uh, Pleasant Valley will turn down the penalty, so they're going to get the ball back after the punt. So they'll send two guys back deep, Thompson and Greenwood, as Donnie Connor will be in to set to punt for the Bulldogs to be his third punt. He'll be punting from his 25-yard uh, line. He'll take the snap. It's a good one. Take a couple of steps. Get his foot into it. Oh, perfect spiral. Nice-looking punt down to the 16-yard line. Thompson's got a lot of running room. Picks up a nice block. They'll call a flag on it. Blocking behind the back is going to be the call. As instead of PB having the ball at their own 35-yard line, it's going to be back at the line 15. Well, that was a really nice return by Thompson. He's a little bit faster than I thought he was, and uh, I saw him play a lot of baseball this summer, too, at different times, and, boy, he really exploded on that. But the guy that got the penalty was Jason Bowling, and, and he just missed probably getting his front. It wasn't a big-time clip, but he might have just missed getting his head in front, and it might have went the other way. But any time it's right in front of the officials, you're not going to get that call, Pete. So. And, you know, John, we haven't mentioned this yet, but... Uh this game uh, you're listening to is going to be, you can be able to watch it uh, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. Family Ties production, Jess Medina is here and taping, and we're providing the audio for it. So, uh, uh, Family Ties production, Jess uh, done a nice job over the years of uh, recording uh, football games and replaying them on the cable channels. And uh, this year you can watch it on Channel 19, this game Wednesday at 8. Offense out on the field for Pleasant Valley. Zeke will keep it as he crosses the 15 to the 20-yard line on the option play as uh, Pleasant Valley had guys going everywhere. Yeah, they really did. That's their counter option play. That's the play, Pete, that they tried to run down the goal line where they got stuffed earlier. But Austin Ziegler did a lot better job at that time of reading it. And, and the offensive line had a great surge again. And, and he found the crease and had a nice uh, four-yard pickup uh, on first down. Pleasant Valley, second down and six. From their own 20-yard line, Ziegler under center. Double tight, double wing set formation. Thompson weaves his way in and out of Ben York defenders to the sideline, and he's only going to pick up a short gain, maybe of uh, one or two yards on the play before he is knocked out of bounds by number 42 for the Bulldogs. That is Chuck Well, Pete, what happened then, it looked like he got knocked out of bounds, but Thompson has such fast feet, he tightrope down the boundary there, and actually he got another four yards, and it ends up bringing up uh, maybe five. It looks like third and one there. Hmm. Third down. Now, I'll tell you what he's doing. He's setting up the Bent North defenders. It looks like they're in good position to tackle him, and his quick feet kind of gives him a shake, and then he has that second speed. Lynn and Martinez split back in the backfield. Thompson the wing as one of the fullbacks gets the ball. I think it might have been Martinez. And he'll have enough for the first down. Picks up a nice four-yard game. They'll move the chain. Seven to three to score. Pleasant Valley leading Bettendorf. Nine minutes, 15 seconds to play in the first I'm sorry. All right now the Pleasant Valley offensive line uh, are doing a nice job. They're getting underneath the shoulder pads of the Bentendorf defensive lineman. Early in the year it's a natural tendency for linemen to kind of stand up and look for the ball. Ziegler under center. 
He's going to pass it. Rolls out to the strong side, trying to avoid the defender, and he cannot. Taken down on the play easily. The defensive end, number 36, it looks like, for the Bulldogs. That is Luke Andrew Rusk. Tackle for a loss by number 36, Luke Andrusik. Andresik. Andresik. I was waiting for the PA yep. guy, Pete, because he had to know him. But the one thing Andresik did on that play, he really used his hands well, and he didn't lose contain. And he fought off that block. He, he made the Pleasant Valley quarterback, Ziegler, pull up and, and, all, and ended up getting a sack. So just an all-around outstanding play. Two tight ends, two wing, and the fullback is Martinez. Thompson on the pitch. Thompson. Not going to have anywhere to go. He's going to lose a lot on that play. He loses about five yards. As just a nice play on defense by Bettendorf. It's almost yeah. like they know what's coming now. Well, that time when you run that toss sweep, there's two there's two creases in there, and a lot of times it's going to be inside the tight end, and and it looked like Justin Thompson just misread that. And once you bounce it out with the speed of the Bentonhurst defenders, they came up and they put a big hit on Thompson and a huge loss for Pleasant Valley. Well, we'll see what the Bulldog or the uh, Spartans can come up with on third and 23. We haven't mentioned David Kubik yet. Draw play right up the middle. Breaks one tackle, but it picks up a game of about six yards is Martinez. And uh, again, we haven't, David Kubik, when you're a talented tight end, we uh, haven't seen him at all. Well, he's doing a good job of blocking, and that's why Pleasant Valley's moved the ball. And I thought Coach Morris, he came up with a nice call there because there's not too many third and 22 uh, or 23 uh, yard playbooks that you can make the right call with and he just tried to get something safe so Pleasant Valley will punt it away. Mark Klein I believe in the punt. Gets his toe into it. A wobbler, a very high kick and it's going to take a Bettendorf bounce and a roll out of bounds at the near sideline right at the 34 yard line. So only about a 25 yard punt but uh, no return yards on it and if you're Ed Morris in Pleasant Valley you've got the lead 7-3 to three here midway through the third quarter. He just took four minutes off the clock. Didn't get a first down but he took four months off the clock. Yeah they did. I, I think Brian Barquist, the defensive coordinator for uh uh, Bentendorf, or that'd be Aaron Wiley, excuse me, that uh, calls the defensive plays. He had to be pretty happy, uh, you know, getting the Pleasant Valley stopped and also get the ball in good field position. Jackson on first down, counter Trey. He'll have a game of about five yards across the 40 yard line as uh, Bettendorf has tremendous. I remember coming over and watch Bendor practice in the playoffs, and here's Aaron Wiley all patched up. He just had his appendix out, and he came right from the hospital to coach. So, you know, uh, there's a guy that really loves the game, have a passion for it. Second down and six. Ball to 39 of Pleasant Valley. Fick up the fingertips of Jackson. He managed to hang on to it, but is tackled immediately on the play as an injured Spartan is number 24 on the play. Cade Mahler as Mahler. Well, Cade was the one that had the nice interception for Pleasant Valley before half, and really he played that very well. They're running their cover two corners, their corners are rolled up, and they're reading through the number two receiver, and, and basically, uh, you know, uh, Bettendorf uh, keeps trying to throw it to the outside guy in the, in the Pleasant Valley corners, has done a good job of, of playing back to it and holding it for short yardage. Mahler uh, favoring his right ankle or foot uh, was in on the stop of Jackson who looks like uh, didn't pick up any yards on the play and he's going to be helped off the field he's not putting any pressure on his right ankle and he's about five feet away from the sideline over there so he'll get up and walk it off as uh, Bettendorf already out of the huddle big play third down and six so this could be third down four down territory for the Bulldogs Jackson will start in for in uh, slot and he'll dot the eye, but Grant, or a fake goes back, throws the screen. Jackson has it. Going to have some running room. Gets the first down and more to the 25 to the 20, down to the 12-yard line on the stretch. Great, great. Oh, penalty flag on the play. Penalty flag on the play. Referees in person midfield. I was going to say, what a great call, great execution. Not many high school teams can call a third down and long. Uh, screen pass and execute it like that, but that's coming back, holding on the play, or a blocking behind the back. And I think they, it looked like it was going to be an illegal block. Play. 
Well, Ryan Fick really did a good job of play faking, and I have to give him a lot of credit because Jason Bowling was right there in his face again and leveled him as he threw the ball. Excellent screen call. They, they sprinted towards the Pleasant Valley bench, threw back to the wide side of the field. Nice screen. Bendorf does a very good job with their screen plays in, but it's still third, but only third and four or five. Yep, third and uh, four is what the scoreboard says. Instead of third and six, so it was uh, from the spot of the foul back. As uh, Fick will roll out under some pressure, eludes a tackler, and it's going to be taken down. He passes, throws a pass, and they're going to call it incomplete. Good break for the Bulldogs as uh, he was going down in the grass. Could have been the call, uh, but Fick probably could have run it for the first down and instead decided to stop and look around and then. Uh, took it to the sideline before he was gang tackled by three or four Spartans. Yeah, that was a great adjustment by the Pleasant Valley defense. You know, they've been allowing uh, Bettendorf to sprint out a little bit, but what they did is they brought number uh, 45, Kevin Lynn, uh, and he scraped extremely hard from the linebacker position and got into Fick's face right away. And, and you know, for Fick, there really wasn't much to do except for try and get as much out of the scramble. Fourth down, pass, broken up. No, no completion on the fourth down. Pass intended for Thomas Davis. Davis could not hang on to it. I thought it was broken up on the play. The referees, uh, I'm not sure if anyone really saw it, but uh, turnover on downs. It was a regular slant pass to Davis, and uh, the coverage was good. And again, Bendorf misses out on an opportunity. And uh, John, this is exactly what happened. Well, they're going to have to. Uh, yeah, they're going to have just some routes here. Uh, Pete, because uh, you know Pleasant Valley keeps uh, you know running the same coverage, good mix-ups, and they're throwing right into coverage every time. And Pleasant Valley's uh, secondary is very well coached. Pro set, Veer over uh, right tackle as the fullback, and uh, no one knew where the ball was on the field except the guy who was making the tackle. And uh, the ball here is, I believe, Lynn on the play. He'll pick up a gain of about two yards. Well, on that play, yeah, they didn't get a lot of uh, yardage on that, but they ran a lot of time off the clock. He kept running sideways and sideways and sideways, and uh, that's the way Ed Morrissey likes to play. He likes to control the ball and take time off the clock, shorten the game. Second down and eight on the option, and uh, actually it looked like quarterback handed it off to the fullback. It's just awful hard to tell. They uh, run such a tight uh, line split as Martinez, not much, actually loses the yard on the play. It's going to be third down and long. 3.52 to play in the third quarter. Our score was a barely three, seven. Bet North three. three. Bet North on the scoreboard first with a 28 yard field goal from Chris Mahoski at the 6.17 mark of the first quarter. Justin Thompson then answered with a three yard run with 45 seconds left in the first half. 7 to 3. Pleasant Valley. The Spartans have it. Third and nine from their own. Eh, 37 yard line. Quarterback under center rolls out, got some running room, he's going to keep it. Breaks one tackle, two tackles, has it up for a first down for the Spartans. What a play by Austin Ziegler. And we got a Spartan down in a little bit of pain. As. That uh, looked like one of their linemen right now. Uh, Austin Ziegler really had a nice play on that. We just ran a sprint out pass to the wide side of the uh, field, Pete, and he just tucked it. He knew where the first down marker was, and that's a sign of a great quarterback to, to sprint up there and, and get the first down. And this one looks a little bit more of a serious injury compared to the one we had a couple of minutes ago. Uh, maybe uh, we'll go over a list of our fine sponsors. Well, uh, we, we've already thanked the 11th Street Barn Grill, and they have those famous tenderloins. We also want to thank Home Hardware, Damport oldest and best hardware store. Lesson for the hardware, guys. Saturday mornings, 9.30 on WLC. I bought all my lawn boy lawnmowers from them, too, Pete. It's right <laughs> by my house. So Hungry Hobo uh, has 11 convenient Quad City locations, including the newest one, the store at 4810 Elmore Avenue in Davenport. We'd like to thank uh, Maxwell's Transmissions for over 20 years of experience in the transmission area and Bribiesco and Associates, a law firm specializing in personal injury. Bill and, sp Bribiesco. and speaking of injury, who was the guy, Pete? Did we uh, get it now? 52, Alex Hensel was uh, helped off in the field to center. They have to bring in a new center who's taking snaps with quarterback Austin Ziegler. Uh, 
I got a couple in there. Yeah, uh, you know, you got to have a little bit of concerns when your center goes down because, you know, the, the, we've always said the most important play is the center quarterback exchange. So it'll be interesting to see how the first snap comes up. Split back formation, two receivers split to the wide side of the field. Handoff goes to the second back through, bounces it outside as Lynn, Lynn collared down at the 50 yard line. Gain of about three or four yards on the play. It'll be second down for the Spartans. They lead seven to three over Bettendorf. We've got 50 to play in the third quarter. Uh, excellent run support that time by Adam Barron's coming up from his safety when that ball got bounced out. Adam did a great job of filling from inside out and also made a nice open field tackle. Austin Ziegler done a great play calling job tonight for the Spartans. Brings him back to the line of scrimmage. One tight end, double wing set formation, Martinez. Actually, Lynn on the counter play, plenty of running room, crossed the 45 to the 40 yard line into Bulldog territory, drop down at the 38 yard line. First down, Spartans is another injured player on the ground. This time, it is a Bulldog, and it is number 61, I believe, who is Parker Whale. I have Parker Quell, he's been playing an excellent game at defensive end along with uh, the Langford kid. Both those guys have been, Tommy Langford, have been really active. And Pete, in these first ball games, we've already seen three kids, you know, with some type of injury. And you just really hate to see that because they work so hard. They went through the, you know, the heat of the two-a-days. And this is, for a lot of these kids, it might be their senior year. And hopefully these young men will pop up and, and get a little bit healthy and come back and play. And there's another injured Bulldog who came off uh, the sidelines uh, rather quietly, number 35, uh, Jake Carter favoring his left foot, I believe, from his limp uh, out on the field. The physicians, along with Coach Scott, looking at Parker Qual as he is not putting any uh, not putting any weight or much weight on his left foot. You see Tumi Mendel, Dr. Mendel out. As, uh, and I got to say, I really like Dr. Tubi Mendel because he just did the surgery on my knee and, and it's really feeling good. So I want to thank him, uh, hopefully, for doing a great job. As uh, Quayle now putting a little bit of pressure on his left foot as he'll take a seat on the Bulldog bench. So both teams, a couple of injuries, got some players out, some starters out. Quarterback keeper as Ziegler uh, had a tough time with the uh, dive on the option. Looks like they were going to run the option or hand it off to Thompson. Sweeping through Thompson had a lot of running room for Ziegler if he would have followed him, but uh, he had a hard, hard time getting the ball out of the belly of the fullback. It'll be second down and long as we are approaching the end of the third quarter, 7-3. Pleasant Valley leading. Bettendorf's uh, linebacker Chuck Mayberry made a nice play on that play, and also Mike Rashin. He's been around the ball a little bit tonight, too. Second down and nine. Ball spotted at the Bettendorf 37-yard line. PV on the run. Two tight ends, two wing. On the counter play to Lynn. Lynn, a little bit of running room. Oh, almost breaks it. He almost breaks a, a dual tackling effort. And if he could have stayed on his feet, he would have been gone. And Ziegler gets up slow from the turf. Must have taken a pretty good shot on the play, but he's all right. He'll walk it off. Close to the first down marker, it'll be third down and two as uh, Pleasant Valley could really use a first down here to eat up some time to and take it into the fourth quarter as number one Matt Mulvania brings into play for the Spartans. You know, Pleasant Valley P has really done a good job of sending that play. And what you're going to watch from the Pleasant Valley backs, they really do a great job of blocking for each other, carrying out their fakes, and that's the strength of their offense. Movement in the backfield. This is going to move them back five yards. Unfortunate mistake by the halfback. Uh, it looked like Lynn, Kevin Lynn, was the one who moved on the play. Wow, that'll change things. Well, when it's third and two and you're playing against a very aggressive Bettendorf defense, you know, a good thought is probably maybe to go on two and get the cheap first down. And that's a great call, but your own players have to remember right. that it's on two. And, and uh, Lynn jumped that time, so it sets up, uh, looks like about a third and seven or eight. Pete. You know what else it does? It, it stops the clock there for a second while the referee <laughs> stops it now. But in a close game like this, yeah, I mean, Ed Morsey wants that clock to go if he's got the lead. So instead of third and two, third and seven, two tight ends. Double wing set as, oh, a quick slant pass to the backside tight end. Number 15 goes incomplete. David Kubik as uh, there he was. But uh, pass wasn't anywhere near yeah. where Kubik was. Kubik uh, 
probably could have had a big gainer on the play being broken it right up the middle of the field but the pass was uh, in front of him and he had to dive for it well what happened there Kubik really did a nice job reading the defense he kind of sat in the hole and I think Ziegler or, or thought he was going to uh, you know, throw the ball a little bit. He thought he was going to continue his run, and and Austin's got to know that uh, you can't. Uh, wow, can't throw the ball to a Bettendorf guy. Mark Klein slips on his punt, but the ball rolls inside the 20-yard line, down at the 17-yard line. So Klein, uh, even though he's, his plant foot slips, he gets off the punt, and uh, Bettendorf will take over first and ten from their own. 17 yard line. We got 25 seconds to play. I'm sure we'll check in with Bill Horrell here once we uh, start the fourth quarter of action and see what's going on with uh, North Scott and Central from Brady Street Stadium. That's where we'll be next week for Central and West next Friday, September 12th, Davenport Central and Davenport West. What I like to call it, two thirds of the battle of the local schools of Davenport. You know, Pete, both these teams, Pleasant Valley and Bentendorf, outstanding programs. And, I, you know, I talked to both coaches, and I think Bentendorf right now is around 13 or 14 kids playing college football, led by Justin Lang, kicker at Western Illinois, Gableman at Iowa. Yeah, that's right. Cutright, Shabillion, and VC at UNI, and Gerskis and Harris. And, I, and, and uh, one of the Gerskis, Paul, is going to probably start for Augie at Santa tomorrow. A couple kids at Ambrose, Johnson, and Cook. So they got a lot of guys. And you look at PV, Mike Clark's, you know, kicking for Augie. Anthony transferred, having a great start at Ellsworth. And and Morrissey's son may start at for Upper Iowa tomorrow in a, in a ball game. So first and ten for the Bulldogs. They fake the jet sweep. It's end around counter to Jackson. Nothing doing. Great play by Matt Mulvania. The defensive end stays at home and uh, doesn't worry about the misdirection that goes on. Makes the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Actually, a loss of a one yard on the play. It's going to be second down and 11. And the clock will end. That's uh, the end of the third quarter. We'll go to the fourth quarter with Pleasant Valley leading 7 to 3 over Bettendorf. It's Mac Football here on WOC Talk Radio, 1420. As we start the fourth quarter of action, Bettendorf with the ball second down. It's a fist. Uh, Messiah met hard in the backfield by two Pleasant Valley tacklers. Not even completed. close to the line of scrimmage. As uh, one of the Pleasant Pitt. Valley defenders stole Take the ground. Looks like he's got a cramp. I think it's number 24, Cade Mahler. And that's probably why Cade left earlier, uh, Pete. Yeah. Remember when he limped off the field. So he's getting a little cramping. Right now, this is what Pleasant Valley secondary is doing. They're sitting there and playing a lot of cover two. They're pressing up on the uh, the receivers from Bentendorf, and they're really doing a nice job of reading all the pass routes that's Bentendorf's running, and they know Bentendorf has young quarterbacks, and that's tough on young guys just starting for the first time. All right, uh, both teams head back over the sidelines. I'm wondering if Bill Morell is around on the line, or maybe he will be here in the next couple of seconds. It look, does look like a pretty bad cramp for Waller who's trying to get up, and he goes back down. As uh, Ed Morrissey out on the field helping them off, along with their trainer, Amy Labarge. Well, I don't know what the stats were exactly at halftime, Pete, and you kind of went through all those, but, uh, you know, Bentendorf has very little offense this half. The Pleasant Valley defense has, right now, is to take control of the game. Uh, we'll see what happens here. There's still a lot of time left in the fourth quarter and still plenty of time for Bentendorf to get a long drive to, you know, to get ahead in this game. Mahler uh, very slowly walking off the field. Uh, and having a leg cramp is uh, not a fun, uh, not a fun thing. It's very painful. Kind of surprising. I mean, it's not hot, and humid out. Well, it's first game, and you, and the other thing is they've been through a lot of pr long practices, and we had a lot of heat earlier. We've had yeah. a beautiful week this week for the kids, and I'm sure they're enjoying playing in this kind of weather. Twin receivers split out to the short side of the field. That's the near side to us. I formation, new look as uh, Jackson then will sprint out in motion to the wide side as Fick still in at quarterback, looks for Jackson, and that sale's incomplete. Fick just couldn't quite put up, hook up with him. And uh, third and long, Bulldogs got to punt it now. Fourth down, and uh, Donnie Connor is probably going to be standing on the goal line. Well, he, he'll be standing inside the five-yard line. 
or right at the five yard line for this one. You know, Brian Barquist, the offensive coordinator for Bendorf, really made a nice adjustment there. Got to two by two against cover two, and Jackson ran a real nice route and he broke open. He was there, and the Bendorf quarterbacks have got to be more accurate with their throwing. Wow, nice, high spiral punt. Fair catch called by Thompson right at the 50 yard line. Beautiful punt from Donnie Connor. Uh, lefty who uh, pulled down another high snap from the center. Awful nice. But right now, Pete, the Bent North defense has to step step it up because even Justin if Pleasant Hunt. Valley doesn't score and they let them take another four or five minutes off the clock, First that's really going to put a lot of pressure on the Bent North offense who hasn't done a lot tonight. So we'll see. This is a crucial dri uh, drive for both teams. Bent North defense stepping it up and, and the ball control offense by Pleasant Valley. 11.37 to play in the ball game. Pleasant Valley 7, Bent North 3. Double tight, double wing. As Lynn with the ball on the counter, a little bit of running room, has a gain of about five yards on first down for Pleasant Valley. That's five. Clock is running. Yeah, it really is. And that's the play they came back to. Even though there was a miss up and one of their backs went the wrong way, this Lynn kid is tough. And he's, he, he's the old uh, guy that, you know, be your own blocker type of guy. So when there isn't anything there, he just lowers his shoulders and, and tries to get two or three yards by himself. Second down and seven. Ball at the Bettendorf 46 yard line. 11 minutes to play in the ball game. A receiver split out to the short side of the field. Double wing set. As fullback up the middle gets the ball. It was either Martinez or Lynn. Probably Martinez as the referee's waiting. Blow the play dead pretty late on that one. That was a weird looking play. You know, for this uh, wing T offense or double wing offense that, that uh, Pleasant Valley is running, those three backs, Martinez, Thompson, and Lynn, they really complement each other. They run hard. They block very well. They have a little, you know, they have enough speed to, to threaten them. Bettendorf's defense, huge play right now, Pete. This is a possession down, and, and they've got to get uh, three and out and get their offense back on the field. Third and five. Ziegler under center. Counter crisscross to Thompson. Thompson is... Fights his way to the first down marker that's going to held, going to be held a little bit shy. About two yards shy. You know what? This might be four down territory for the Spartans. Uh, I don't know. But if you punt it, you might be able to pin him deep. Right. This is going to be a tough decision here. He'll probably punt it. Uh, Bentnor's linebacker looked like Brent Troy again made a really nice play of staying home on that crown and crisscross. But this is Ed Morris, and he is going to punt. So. Yeah, and and Bettendorf's going to play it uh, safe here. They'll send one guy deep, and that is Matt Gowan. As uh, not a bad area for a fake either. But Klein's going to get it run up. It gets a really good punt off line drive. It's going to be fielded at the five-yard line by Gowan. If he can reach the corner, which he can't, wow. he's going to be taken down at the 10-yard line. Probably should have let that one go. Might have trickled into the end zone. Well, it looked like Matt made two mistakes there. One, do you let it go? He did catch it uh, probably at the 10 or less. But number two, the wall was set to the wide side of the field. And if he could have set that up, the wall was forming. And he kind of panicked on that. And I think if he could have just been a little bit more patient, Bettendorf might have had a chance on that. 9.27 playing the ball game. Pleasant Valley 7, Bettendorf 3. Another chapter in this long rivalry will come down to the fourth. Congratulations to the Bettendorf sophomore football team. Now, Pete, let's thank Hungry Hobos, Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center, 11th Street Bar and Grill, Home Hardware, and my favorite betting, L&W betting, uh, for their being proud sponsors, Maxwell Transmission, Brevi Escon Associates. Without those people, we wouldn't be here tonight, Pete. That's right. That is exactly right. Four carries for 49 yards. Two well, this is a big offensive touchdown. series for Randy Scott's offense and the Bettendorf Bulldogs. They need to have a nice drive, and this could be uh, the series that makes the decision to who wins this game tonight. Bettendorf's offense will uh, trot out to the field. They will huddle up near the five-yard line. Ball spotted at the 15-yard line. Pleasant Valley, a 5-2 defensive set. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. In motion is Messiah. Messiah will fake the jet handoff sweep. Handoff goes up the middle to the fullback as he is close to the first down. That's Sean Rizzo. Good looking play. 
Yeah, you know, coming in this game, we, we really probably thought that the Bettendorf tailbacks and and we saw thought we'd see a little more of the ball being thrown outside. But really, uh, the guys that you know has dented the defense a little bit has always been their fullback, uh, Sean Rizzo, and Sean's a senior and uh, he's ran this offense now for two years and he looks very comfortable in it. First and ten for the Bulldogs. Ball at their own 25 yard line. Referees will blow this play dead as uh, looks like they just weren't quite set to go. Now they'll start the play clock. And the game clock, 9 12 to play in the football game. Same play. Rizzo fights his way for a gain of about three or four yards. It'll be second down for the Bulldogs. And yeah, they really uh, run in that jet sweep motion there and then handing the ball inside. The jet sweep, the speed sweep causes a little bit of confusion, especially to the secondary guys. And they're starting to mix it up here a little bit. And, and uh, you know, if you can take an offense right now in the fourth quarter and go 85 yards to win a game, that'd be a heck of an accomplishment for Randy Scott's offense. Second down and five. Messiah again for the third straight play. They'll fake the jet sweep. Rizzo up the middle, a lot of running room across the 50 to the 45 to the 43 yard line of Pleasant Valley. Oh, they run the same play three times in a row. And each time it's been there for the Bulldogs. That time a big gainer from Sean Rizzo. Well, this is where Bent North's program a lot of times separates herself, Pete. They have a lot of guys that only go one way, where the Pleasant Valley's the assumptions of North Scott. They got a lot of two way guys, and, and we'll see if the Bent North offensive line versus the Pleasant Valley defensive line threw up to the challenge. First and 10, Messiah in motion again. Rizzo up the middle, same play. Oh, he almost fumbled. I think the ball almost came out on that play. He's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage gates. The, yard on the, line of the, uh, the next play is something different. Yeah, really nice job by Rob Wakeland. He stuffed that trap a couple times, and I think uh, he kind of knew it was coming after he got trapped a couple times before. So, you know, that combination of Wakeland and Bowling in that defensive line from Pleasant Valley has caused Bettendorf some problems. Second down and nine. Messiah in motion again. Ooh, fumble on the play. Jackson picks it up. It's going to be dropped for a three-yard loss. Looks like they were going to try and run an option that way, maybe. But uh, uh, Fick got caught up with uh, Rizzo on the play, on the dive, on the fake. You know, Pete, that's a play that really takes a lot of timing and a lot of practice because you got the jet sweep motion, you're faking the dive, quarterback's trying to pull it, plus run option. There's a lot of things going on. If it's well executed, it's a great play. It's early in the season. Everything's not going to be perfect. This time, straight high formation. Two receivers and a tight end, Jackson. Dots the eye. Screen. Uh, screen to Rizzo. Rizzo breaks two tackles. Can't break a third or a fourth. Gets back to the uh, original line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down and long as uh, Puntine gets yeah, sent in. And the uh, only great thing about Bettendorf is uh, they have enough guys on the team. You just mentioned this a couple of minutes ago about the depth. But when they, when they punt the ball, or when the offense and defense switches, they bring in 11 new guys. That's what they do, and they keep a lot of guys involved, and that's why they always have 50 to 70 kids out for football. And, you know, they're, they're a very good screen team, and the first, first couple Pleasant Valley's missed that, but that Jason Bowling again came from his defensive line spot to make that play. Connor punting from his own 40. A uh, short wobbler doesn't quite get it to turn over, though. Uh, Pleasant Valley will let it go, and it's going to be down at the five-yard line. Playing safe football, I mean, you're going to give up 10 yards, but uh, you're going to get the ball back. And of course, he knows what to do with six minutes of play in the football game. Pleasant Valley leading Bettendorf 7 to 3. Well, Bendorf, I'm sure, felt like if they couldn't score, uh, that was a better success. That's their second best choice. Their great punt pins them inside the eight. The D, you know, the return guy, Brent Greenwood for Pleasant Valley, also made the right decision because you don't want to field the ball inside the 10 yard line. Playing for field position. First and 10, ball at the six yard line for Pleasant Valley. Adolph goes to the second back through the hole. That looked like Thompson. Thompson took a little quick. Quick pitch as uh, quarterback Ziegler was one of the lead blockers on the play. 
picks up about two yards on the play, maybe three. Let's see what the scoreboard says. Two-yard two yard game. It'll be second down and eight for the Spartans. Well, the Bendorf defense made a lot of adjustments. They gave up that uh, uh, kind of a short counter play to to the Pleasant Valley backs, but they've adjusted really well, and uh, Pleasant Valley's defense also has made great adjustments. So i got to give both staffs a lot of credit. This has been a hard, tough, fought football game for an opener. Second down and eight, two receivers twin to the near side of the field, the short side of the field. Pro formation in the backfield, handoff up the middle, nothing doing. Stood up at the line of scrimmage, might have lost a yard, is Martinez. Well, this is a part of the field, Pete, that you really practice. You're, you know, you're coming out offense. You're trying just to get a first down. Your defense knows, hey, we had a great punt. We've got to hold these guys back in there and give our offense a chance. So both teams are trying to execute a key part of their, of their, of their game. Five minutes to play in the football game. As third down. Third and long, third and seven for the Spartans. Ziegler. Going to play it safe on the counter play. Still on his feet. Wow, almost uh, almost near the 15 yard line. It's going to be short of the first down is Martinez. But the clock will keep running. And Bettendorf's going to get the ball back with about four minutes and 20, 20 seconds to play in the ball game, trailing 7 to 3. Well, Pleasant Valley, uh, you know, probably would have loved to have the first down there, Pete, but the second best thing that happened to them, they gave their punter a little bit more room. Uh, looks like Bettendorf uh, takes a timeout for yep. a couple reasons. I don't think they have enough guys on the field. So we'll take a timeout. It's 7-3 the score. Pleasant Valley leading Bettendorf here on our MAC Game of the Week on WOC Talk Radio 1420. Fourth down for Pleasant Valley into punt. Standing on his goal line, Mark Klein. Good snap, Klein takes it, gets it off really high, really short, and he was run into, but no penalty flag. Takes a Pleasant Valley bounce, so Bettendorf will take over at their own 43-yard line. Klein did a good job to get it away, but uh, he was run into, but uh, the blocker was uh, pushed into him by a Pleasant Valley. Guy 422 to play in the game. Well, Bettendorf really put good pressure at Hurry Klein, and he kind of towed the ball, Pete, but it did get that good bounce, and uh, Bettendorf has excellent field position now. I will believe we will check in with Bill Harrell here, maybe after this play, first down in 10. Bill over at the uh, North Scott Central game. Up the middle, Rizzo on that same play, no go. Uh, Bill, are you there? Go ahead. Actually, Bill, if you want to stay on the line there, we've got an injured man down for Pleasant Valley. But it'll be second down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Clock stopped, 406 to play. That's the only bad thing about that if you're a Pleasant Valley supporter. Just Messiah in motion. Counter trade, nope. Fick rollout. And he's going to chuck it into the sideline. Perfectly legal play. As uh, no receiver open, uh, Jackson was running a flag route, but uh, not open on the play. Smart play from uh, the young quarterback, the junior, Mr. Fick. Yeah, I think, Pete, that might have been a called run all the way. I think they thought with all the play action faking they had in there that maybe uh, Ryan Fick with his speed uh, could get outside, but Pleasant Valley, again, very well coached. Number one, Matt Mulvania stayed at home, and Matt has very good speed, and Fick couldn't outrun him. Third down and 10, big play, probably four down territory with the clock running down for the Bulldogs. As Fick again rolls out, looking for the bench and go wide open in the middle of the field, passes caught, and is it? I think he might have dropped it, but they're going to give it to him. Who is that? Number 21 it is Chris Ivory. The junior makes the catch at the 22-yard line. You know, it looked like he caught it in his stomach and the ball went down to his feet. And I thought with his hands he was trying to regain possession while he was on the ground. I don't think any of the referees saw it. There wasn't any complaint from Pleasant Valley, even though they, of course, were nowhere around him. Well, he's wide open. To the well, you just can't play your safeties that soft. Uh, Jason Thompson did a nice job of covering the out route, but the safety didn't match up. And another big run here. Jackson on the move at the 10 to the 5, diving for the end zone, out of bounds, inside the 5-yard line. 
Plus Valley two years to time out after that. Long completion. As three and a half minutes to play in the game. First and goal from the two for the Bulldogs. Well, you can see if Tim Jackson can smell that goal line, Pete. He really runs hard. He made a nice move there. He's going to be an excellent back here by the end of the year. Two receivers split out. This time Dolan in the slot. Jackson, the tailback. A Rizzo, I'm sorry, Rizzo. Jackson up the middle into the line of scrimmage. And he's not going to get much back to the line of scrimmage. Clock running, 3.15 to play in the ball game. Pleasant Valley 7, Bettendorf 3, Bettendorf at the Pleasant Valley 3-yard line. Officials call a timeout. Uh, I wonder if someone has an equipment problem for Pleasant Valley. Actually, they're sending a Pleasant Valley guy off of the field. Yeah, that's number 60, it looked like, Rob Wakefield. Wakefield not moving his right arm. I'm wondering if there's an injury there. Might have got a little stinger. Big down for the Bulldogs here. High formation, Rizzo, the fullback. Jackson, the tailback. Fake it to Jackson. Fick all alone. Completes a pass. In the end. Oh, no, it's ah. dropped. It's dropped on the play. He was all alone. Or was it? Is it completed? Well, they gave him a completion, Pete, but I don't know. It was one of those plays where I don't know if he really had full possession, so he was wide open. Fick did a great job on the naked boot. The defensive back had to come up and challenge Fick. The ball was tossed, but the officials must have assumed that he had the ball long enough in the end zone, but that's why we'll see it on TV. Wow. <laughs> Who knows? Stands 9-7, to seven, Bettendorf. Johnny dropped the ball. It sure looked like, and I think he thought he did too. Oh, Mahoski's extra point off a line drive, but it's good. He did three drop three the ball. Three. He dropped the ball. You know, it was a good boot fake, and Fick made the right lead, just tossed it up, and the Bendorf receiver got credit for the touchdown. Never really held on to it. Hit his hands, hit his thigh pad, and went to the ground. That's Matt Gowan on the reception. Uh, I thought he dropped the ball. Well, I'm sure the official had a better look than we do, Pete, but uh, I don't know. That's uh, he's right down there, so he's got to assume that he felt like he had it long enough for a score. Wow, uh, 10 to 7 the score, Bulldogs on top, 256 to play in the fourth quarter, and the coaching staff for uh, Pleasant Valley in shock on the sidelines, not happy with the officiating. You know, uh, Brian Barquist did a nice job, the offensive coordinator for Bentnor setting that play up. They attacked the middle on the first down play, came out with a great play action by Fick and then the naked boot. And the, and the Pleasant Valley defensive back did the right thing. He came up hard, tried to force it, yep. and uh, and even though the receiver was wide open, it was either it was a do or die type play down there. Mahoski will kick it off from the 40 yard line. The play is reminiscent of uh, Albert Pujols on uh, Tuesday afternoon uh, with that dropped fly ball in the Cubs Cardinals game. Mahoski's kick high, kind of short, down to the two yard line. Taken there by Pleasant Valley up the middle and met hard right at the 14 yard line. Pleasant Valley's got a long way to go to get either three or seven. This Thompson was the return guy. You know, the one thing you really see in every fourth quarter of Ben North football. Pete is that they have, uh, you know, they're going, their guys are only going one way and they're fresh and they're getting after it. And uh, it's a real tribute to Randy Scott's program because in these type of ball games, they're very, very tough. So first and 10 for Pleasant Valley. We'll see if they can answer the touchdown by Bettendorf rolling out. And it's gonna be sacked on the play back at the five yard line. Austin Ziegler had nowhere to go. Clock running, 2.40 to play. You know, in the fourth, it's in the fourth quarter, Pete, it's been Bettendorf's defense. They've really revved it up. They're playing at a faster tempo right now. They look fresh-legged, and they're really getting after the Pleasant Valley Spartans in the last three Pleasant Valley possessions. So give a lot of credit to the defense to turning this game around. On second down, back to pass. Ziegler tipped away the line of scrimmage. 
by number 44, Tom Langford. You know, Tom Langford, a defensive end, kind of read that pass. He knew he couldn't get to the quarterback, so he just pulled up and got his hands in. He got the hands in the passing lane and knocked the ball down. Great play by Tommy Langford. So third down and long, third and 17 for Pleasant Valley. 2-11 to play in the football game. So uh, play of the night so far was Chris Ivory as... Pleasant Valley is going to take a timeout. We'll take a one-minute break. Our score, Bendorf 10, Pleasant Valley 7. It's Mac Football here at WLC Talk Radio 14-20. Bettendorf leading 10-7 over Pleasant Valley. Two minutes, 11 seconds to play in the ball game. Third and long, third and 17 for Pleasant Valley. Back at their own five-yard line in the end zone. Trying to duck away, can't get away. Sacked at the two-yard line is the quarterback, Aaron Austin, Austin Ziegler. Under two minutes to play now, and uh, Pleasant Valley is going to have to punt it away. It's like 20. Well, Pete, you know, when you're a defensive guy, you like third and 15s if you're a defensive lineman because you can pin it back and go. And, and in high school, it's hard to make third and 15, third and 16 calls for anybody. You don't yeah. really practice those a lot, and that's not the situation that any high school offense wants to be in. Now we got fourth down. And they're going to go for it. And it's really backed up. And the two-yard line. Fourth and 22 from the two-yard line for Pleasant Valley. So this is it. This is the game right here. Under center, man in motion down the line of scrimmage. We could see a trick play here. And Ziegler's going to be sacked in the end zone for a safety. So the safety with 115 to play. We'll move the score to 12 to 7. Really, you know, the game's not over with you. No, not really. Ben That's right. to get the ball back, and uh, they still got to do something with it, get a first down. Uh, so Pleasant Valley conceivably could get the ball back and win with a touchdown. Uh, so it's really not that bad. Uh, but, man, you'd like to have that first down play back when uh, Ziegler was sacked. Uh, it really took them out of field position. They went from first and 10 to first and 16 to first and 22 to fourth and 22. And, the safety happens. Uh, didn't see the Bettendorf defender on the safety. We'll give credit to the whole defensive line. They've uh, done a yeah, nice job. It, the last it looked like minutes. 61 Parker Quell and they had a host of other guys. But if you really noticed in the last probably two or three series Pleasant Valley had, the Bet Bettendorf defensive lineman really came up big. They started moving around better, got more pressure. Uh, Kevin Frecking coaches the defensive line. I'm sure he had a few. Uh, uh, complimenting words for him because that's the way Kevin is all the time, you know. Nice yeah, real nice. But uh, I'm sure he got in the air in a little bit, and they really stepped it up. Tommy Lankford started showing up big, and and uh, Quell and a few of those other guys. So uh, Bettendorf's defensive line uh, from the uh, fourth quarter on has been huge for him. I would onside kick this, John. I definitely got to, Pete. That's yeah. your only chance. And and you know what? And that, you know, you come back, think about it, safety isn't too bad because if you recover this kick, you've you got better field position, yeah. right? So, and we'll see uh, Bendorf's lining up in their hands team position, and there's an onside kick. It's got to go 10 yards. Ball's not going to go 10 yards. Rizzo, not Rizzo. Someone else picks it up, returns it for a touchdown. This game is over. That's number 43. That's Pat Anger. That's uh, just a heads up play. And the one thing on the onside kick, you really got to kick it hard and you got to make sure it gets to the boundary and get to a yard. Uh, heads up play by Angry Pat Ang Angener. And uh, that's it. That's it for the game. Pleasant Valley played extremely well. Bettendorf's defensive line made a difference in the fourth quarter. Both defensive lines for both teams were outstanding. Great win for Bentendorf, tough loss for the PV Spartans. Yeah. Um, and it just didn't look like uh, didn't look like Pleasant Valley uh, really knew what was going on with their onside kick unit. Maybe it was something that they hadn't practiced a whole lot. Because uh, they certainly weren't told going out there, look, make sure one of the Bentendorf kids doesn't kick up, pick up the ball on the run and take it in. Uh, and that's exactly what happened on the play. So Pat Anger, I'm going to give him a 25-yard touchdown kickoff return for a touchdown, uh, which will seal the deal here. Right now it's 18-7. to Bettendorf had to take a timeout because they weren't, uh, didn't have 11 guys on the field for Chris Mahoskey's 
extra point try. Well, midway through the fourth quarter when uh, Pleasant Valley was pinned down at the eight, they really needed to uh, get a first down. And, and you work hard and you're coming out offense to get that one first down to keep the clock going. Bentendorf's defense stepped it up. Uh, we had a, a 45. Basically, it was only a 45-yard drive. And you look at uh, Bentendorf scores, the first one, the field game. Field goal came off a shortened field of only 30-yard drive. And this last one was a 45-yard drive. And that's why uh, when your defense can shorten the field, for your offense, it becomes so much easier for an offensive team to execute their plays. After the extra point, we'll check in with Bill Fulton at Brady Street Stadium. Mahoskins kick is wow, long and deep. That uh, covers, almost clears the track here at the uh, scoreboard end of the stadium. 19 to 7 to score. Bentonville's going to win this one. Bill, are you there? They rally for, let's see, what, uh, 16 fourth quarter points? Yeah, Bentonville's defense stepped it up in the fourth quarter. Ryan Fick at quarterback looked a little bit more comfortable. They started him in the second half. He did a nice job. And it, you know, be honest with you, PV, with all their guys going both ways, might have gotten a little worn down uh, late in this game. Mahoskey's kick, a couple of yards into the end zone. The referees will blow it dead. Uh, Chris does a nice job tonight with the field goal and uh, made his extra points, kicked a couple in the end zone. He'll get a handshake from uh, Coach Randy Scott. Dad on the helmet. Well, dad, Pete, uh, yeah, go ahead. Dad used to play against you. I no, he never really played against me. Uh, he, uh, I Chuck guess he Moskey. did. Yeah, he did. He, he played was, one year. I was a senior when he was a sophomore, so he was a little he, bit uh, younger. Quarterbacked. Uh, right, with Curtis Craig. Right. To so. A state title. And now he umpires eight million baseball games. So. First down for the Spartans. A minute eight to go in the ball game on the draw play. Martinez up the middle. A lot of running room. First down, up to the 34-yard line. And the clock will stop them. The chains, Bentendorf, I mean, uh, Pleasant Valley quickly on the ball. Don't forget, fans, next week, our Mac Game of the Week here on Double Four C. Central at West. You know, in these first games, Pete, both uh, offenses are going to struggle a little bit. I think both teams have a chance to have very good offenses. I know Pleasant Valley probably feels their passing game is definitely have to improve, you know, to win some big games down the road in the Mac. Ziegers. Ziegler uh, scrambles and uh, picks up a nice, healthy eight-yard gain on first down. Clock right at 42 seconds to play. As uh, Bettendorf leading 19 to seven, they've scored 16 straight points here in the fourth quarter on uh, a couple of goofy plays, really. We'll uh, talk about it all during the post-game show. Penalty flags on the play, uh, movement in the backfield. This one is coming back. Don't forget, Thursdays at six, on Fox Sports Radio 1230. The point after myself and Mike Bookwood talk about our area high school football scene for one hour on WFXN Spot Fo Fox Sports Radio 1230. That's Thursdays at 6. The point after presented by Hungry Hobo. Also tomorrow morning, Iowa football pregame with Jim Albrecht, 9 in the morning. Kickoff around 11:10. They host Buffalo at the uh, game right here on Talk Radio 1420. If you're an Illinois fan, 11 o'clock is the kickoff. They host the Redbirds of Illinois State on our sister station, AM 1270 WKBF. Second down, Phil Schaefer in our booth. Phil moved to 10 and 0 in his coaching career as Pleasant Valley throws it deep. Nothing doing. Uh, Bettendorf defeated Pleasant Valley in the sophomore game rather easily. Phil uh, took over the job last year, went 9-0. Uh, his quarterback was uh, Mr. Fick. And now uh, Fick started uh, basically the last three quarters of this game. Done a pretty good job. Made a couple mistakes here and there, but he'll learn on the go. He's just a junior. Third down and seven for the Spartans. Could be the last play. Uh, 17 seconds to play in the football game. Well, Pete, this is a very good football game, and yep. both teams have a lot to be proud of and also a few disappointments. And, you know, if I'm uh, Pleasant Valley, I think they're going to win a lot of football games before it's all over. Pass to the sidelines, goes incomplete. It'll be fourth down and seven. Clock stops with 12, 12 seconds to go. Yeah, also, uh, uh, Sunday win. night, some yeah, NFL we'll action right here on WOC, the Oakland Raiders and the Tennessee for uh, Sunday night here on WOC. And Monday night on our Fox Sports Radio 1230, Monday Night Football, 8 o'clock kickoff, Tampa Bay the Super Bowl champs. Head up to Philadelphia, Tampa Bay and Philadelphia. On the fourth down, Pleasant Valley completes it at the 50-yard line. 
And the clock will stop. They'll move the chains. And the this game is finally done. Ben North comes from behind, trailing 7-3 at halftime. They put 16 unanswered points all within the last, what, four minutes of the yeah, game. Yeah, four basically. or five minutes of the game. And we'll go over the scoring. Yep, some goofy stuff here happened in the fourth quarter. As the uh, clock will hit zero, Ziegler rolls out and finds the receiver. Pass goes incomplete. And that's the ball game. Ben North wins it 19 to 7. Let's take a timeout. We'll come back and talk about what happened. Ben North 19 to 7. It's a final here on WOC Talk Radio 14 Buy a photograph or a pop or a beer or whatever you need down in the concession area. I will be uh, reading our point standing here in a few moments and uh, we'll also. Pretty good lead for the bicyclist over there in turn three.